Morning guys, how you doing? You all right? Right, the kitchen fit begins. So obviously I've put the bulkhead in, and you can see that there. So there's the bulkhead, that divides the dining room off from the kitchen. There's the kitchen area, should I say. So, uh, so we're gonna set about putting the cabinets in today. So I've had my cabinets from Howden's, which is, uh, uh, well, a massive kitchen company, a massive joinery company, should I say, because not only do they do kitchens, they also do timber and other bits of stuff. But, uh, so my kitchens come from Howden's, so it's a good quality one. Uh, so mine are a rigid carcass, which means the actual carcass is actually manufactured and all glued together in the factory. So it gives you, you take one of these where you have to put it together. Uh, you know, they're okay. They're okay to a point. But of course you can't beat uh, having your carcasses rigid made. So Howden's, well they do a few different variants. They do do a flat pack range, but mine are uh, a rigid carcass. So we're gonna start by getting a few kitchen units in <clears throat> uh, today. So. Uh, the height of a base unit, because there's no wall cabinets going up in the boat, they're just all base units. Uh, so uh, today I'll be setting those out. Uh, the height from floor to the top of the cabinet, so not including the worktop, to the top of the cabinet is 890 millimetres. That's a standard height for a Howden's base unit. Uh, other companies, their heights will vary slightly, but for a Howden's unit, uh, we set them at 890, so 890 mil from the floor. Obviously we can't use a level, we've got to square everything off the floor, because that's our only reference point. Uh, so we'll carry on with that. Uh, I'll get the legs screwed on the cabinets, and we'll, uh, we'll start putting a few in. Catch you in a sec. on the edge of the cabinet just so it matches the profile of the boat so it's 20 mil 22 mil down to nothing That's just to allow for obviously the uh, the taper of the uh, the gunnel, taper below the gunnel, should I say? <coughs> the old glasses on. Taper cut off. Right, pop in place. 
Okay guys, there's the first cabinet in. <clears throat> it's a thousand base unit with the corner post on it. Now of course the oven housing is going there, so let's get that built up. Hey guys, there's the oven housing in position, corner post on, and then obviously the thousand base unit, which will have a magic corner in it. So there we go, let's do a bit more. Okay guys, there you go, so all the cabinets are in, there's the oven housing. Then our other unit there, and there's another unit here. Drawing. And then obviously 500 here, and again with the drawing. The fridge is going in that gap there. I might put a wine rack on the end of here yet, because my gap's quite big. So I might put a wine rack in, we'll see. Well, there's the one unit. There's obviously the back of the boat. There's the other cabinet. We'll just a view from this side. Obviously there's the bulkhead, that's where the, the dinette seating is gonna go when I get around to building it. Okay guys, and obviously underneath here, I say obviously, underneath the oven housing is going to be another drawer, so we'll have three drawers. So, next time, we'll get the end panels on. It's got to be an end panel goes on here, end panel on here, same on this end, there, and of course another one on here. And that's the colour, I know you can't really see but it's uh, graphite and obviously that's the uh, colour of all the doors and, and what have you so there you go guys start of the kitchen fit see you next time hey guys how you all doing hope you're all okay keeping your heads down keeping well anyway listen the reason uh, the reason I've popped into the video is uh, is really just to issue a disclaimer uh, because I'm going to show you my gas installation in a minute, my LPG gas installation, uh, which obviously I've installed on the boat. But what I don't want you to do is use it as you know an instructional video. This is how I've done it. Uh, so, uh, and you know what I'm like, I'm a stickler for the rigs, you know, I like to make sure everything's right anyway. So I'm fairly confident that uh, what I've done complies with the regulations, uh, which you must try and achieve all the while. That goes for electric, gas, whatever you're doing, you know, you need to, to do it to the regulations, to the boating standards, of course. Uh, so, uh, so I'm going to show you my gas installation, my LPG installation. It ain't quite finished yet. So all I've done, I've run a, I've run a 10 mil or a 3.8 uh, copper, copper feed from the gas bottle housing. So from the, uh, from the housing outside the boat. Obviously through the bulkhead. Um, through a proper bulkhead fitting. Of course, you've got to put a bulkhead fitting. You can't just drill a hole and pop the pipe through. You know, you've got to seal it against uh, any gas entering the boat uh, from the gas uh, bottle housing. So you need to use a bulkhead fitting. So, uh, so through your bulkhead via the fitting into the boat. Obviously, you want to keep your joints to a minimum. So. Obviously, it goes without saying, doesn't it? You know, the, 
the less joints you've got, the less chances you've got of having a leak. So, uh, so keep your joints to a bare minimum. So uh, try and form radiuses and bends where you can rather than using elbows or what have you. Uh, just like I say, just to keep your joints to a minimum. Uh, make sure you use all the correct fittings. Remember, it's got to be the right pipe. It's got to be thick walled pipe, you know, proper LPG uh, pipe, gas pipe, copper pipe. Uh, like I say, you can get everything from Midland Chandlers, uh, which is where I got all my stuff from. So proper bullfinch valves, you know, make sure they're the proper type. You need to use the proper olives as well. You know, you, the olives on an LPG fittings uh, are square-shouldered. Uh, excuse me, a square-shouldered. So, uh, so that's the type of olive that you use, not uh, not a standard. Uh, like a wedding ring olive as I call it, uh, they need to be the proper type so make sure you get all the proper proper fittings um, for your LPG installation but like I say uh, I've got a disclaimer because I don't want you I don't want you all saying well Carl tell me how to do it you know I mean this is you know I've uh, I've been fitting gas for years and years uh, in factories and everywhere wherever I've worked so it ain't as if I ain't done any I've done loads over the years uh, so I do know what I'm doing. So, but if you're in any doubt, you've got to get someone who's qualified to do it for you. You know, don't take any chances with gas. Uh, it just ain't worth your life. So, uh, so, and even though I've done mine myself, you know, it will be fully tested. I shall do a tightness test on it, you know. So, uh, uh, a gas tightness test to make sure there's no leaking, no leakage at any of the fittings. And of course, uh, when I do come to finish the installation off, uh, i.e. in the in the actual uh, bottle housing, uh, then I shall be putting an Aldi bubble tester in there, and obviously the regulator and uh, and a braided uh, gas hose to the bottle. Uh, so it'll, uh, but obviously I ain't got to that point yet. Uh, that'll be a little bit further down the line. But uh, but of course you've got to test your installation. Make sure there's no leaks, uh, and you know, and then that's something you need to keep on top of as well. You know, even when your boat's on the water and you and you're sailing around, you know, you should always, you know, keep a keep an eye out for any leaks on your on your gas pipe work. So I just wanted to put that in. So I'll show you mine now. This is how I've done it. Uh, like I say, it ain't a how-to video. You know, uh, this is just the way that I've done mine. Um, but as far as I'm aware, you know, it, it complies with all the regulations um, to keep us all safe. So yeah, so here's a few pictures of mine. Uh, obviously, it's got to go. Uh, I've got to put it in. I've had to put it in now because it's behind the kitchen cabinets, of course. Um, and obviously, uh, I ain't gonna have a chance to install it once the cabinets are fixed in place. So, uh, so there you go. I mean, uh, it ain't a complete installation. There's still more work to do. I've only done, I've only done what I needed to do, uh, so I can get the kitchen unit in. So, cheers. Keep your heads down. Keep safe, and I'll, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, guys. So there's the uh, the copper microball going through the bulkhead fitting into the boat. Remember to. Uh, Install plenty of clips to give the uh, pipe all the support it needs, about every 150 mil. So keep, notice there's no, uh, they're all bends and there's no, uh, or very few elbows used. You know, you want to keep your joints to a minimum. And obviously it comes through the dining room bulkhead, comes along to the back of the, uh, of the cooker. So the, the flexible pipes will eventually go into the valves. So the braided pipes will eventually go into the valves and, and into the appliances. So obviously the hob and the, uh, and the gas oven. You'll notice on the left hand side of the T as well, uh, there's the test point fitting. So where the U gauge, uh, the tightness test U gauge will be connected to the system at that point and that's where we can do a drop test to make sure there's no uh, no leakages on the system so there you go guys that's my uh, 
LPG installation. Still more to do, but, uh, but I think you get the gist. So there you go guys, that's the framework built, well some of it, still got a bit more to do obviously, so it's 6 foot 3 long, 1.9 meters and 4 foot wide, right let's do a bit more, obviously you can see the gas pipes are housed underneath the seat so we can access them. All the fittings can be accessed and the test points there to check for leaks and a couple of valves obviously, a couple of isolators. And then there's a power cable which eventually is going to come out to here, to the end there, and we're going to have a socket on there. So uh, there we go for now. Let's do a bit more. Okay guys, there you go. That's the day's work. So obviously that's the bench seat at the back because we're not having a bulkhead at the back of there, it's just going to be a bench. Like obviously this has got a bulkhead at the back of it, separating the, the dining from the kitchen and providing a bit of a splash back for where, because obviously the cookers go in here. So this just provides a splash back for the cooker. And then of course, that's the one seat, which we can lift up so we can access the, uh, the gas fittings and obviously there's a 240 volt cable there because I ain't sure if uh, if the igniter is going to be 240 or 12 volts it'll probably be 12 volts but I'll put a 240 in just in case we can always uh, utilize it somewhere else and obviously there's the staging which is 150 mil light 170 ish when it's got the uh, the ply on top of it and of course there's the one seat with the backrest and that's the whole thing there and of course the table will just be underneath the gunnels once I've got the table and that'll form form the bed so there you go guys that's the day's work done okay guys so that's where we are now. Obviously I've cut a few tops. I'll show you them in place in just a sec. There's the back of the bench. I've just put the front bit on. And obviously these tops will fit in the top there. And obviously there's the, the other pair of seats. And the staging now it's got a cover on it so it's all coming together mm -hmm. 